Welcome to the 650 kilometer review of the KSS18. Now, if you've just joined in and it's the first video you've jumped into, you need to backtrack and go and see the unboxing and the range test and initial impressions video where it's actually up to 100 kilometers. Um, that is where you need to go first, otherwise you're gonna miss out a huge number of points and a lot of in-depth information. This is gonna be considerably shorter and this is what we do. We do the unboxing 250, 650, 1000 kilometers. And that's how we test these wheels. So skip back, there'll be a link below and I'll put a link above. Um, go and check that out. That's in-depth review. This is skimming across now and just gleaming off a bit of feedback for how it's been going for the last 650 kilometers. So straight off the bat, what I would say is this thing is a trooper in terms of just getting on the road, leaning forward and going. It just gives and gives and gives and gives. It's absolutely solid. There's not a hint of it feeling like it's gonna give up or it's weak in any respect. Uh, Off-road, equally the same. So there's never a time when it feels like it's just gonna give up on you. It's got plenty of power uh, to carry you along. Now the suspension, I found it over the last 650 kilometers, it really does take the whip out of a, a, a pothole or a bump. I mean, obviously it doesn't disperse of it completely. No suspension does, even in a car, you know, with four suspension units carrying all the weight, it, uh, you can still feel it travel through sometimes, can't you, when you hit a big pothole or a speed bump or whatever. With this, it takes the edge off it, giving you a much, much better ride. And that's great, that really is great. So if you've got knee problems or back problems, and I explained in video one, about back hurting really from the thousand miler we did carrying that weight i think that's where it derives from um this actually here is just spot on to be able to take that needle edge off it especially if you're commuting day in day out or you're dropping off curbs day in day out and up them as well then this is going to take that out the only thing in regard to linking it directly to commuting is that if you're going near its upper potential, then you eat through that battery. Now that's not unique to this wheel. It's the same for all electric vehicles or anything running on <laughs> lithium ion batteries, shall we say. Um, so you're talking about drones, if you fly them really, really fast, then obviously you're consuming more power. With this, you get about 20, 25 miles if you're pinning the thing, which we never recommend you do anyway. But go and have a look, first review, talk about the range on this but you get the added advantage of having that suspension unit. So it's a bit, of a, a bit of a mix. Do you want the comfort of the ride versus range? Um, so if you're doing, if you are commuting, it's not, to be fair, there's not gonna be many people that are commuting back and forth with this that are gonna ride into work 20 miles. That would be very unusual. We know our customer base, we know the people that commute, you know, we've got thousands of customers in total and we know broadly what they are using these wheels for. Now that would be unusual. Granted though, so if you go out on the weekend, uh, you're going out for a group ride or maybe just on your own and you want to go a nice long ride, this will be a limiting factor, the range, for what you want to do. So you know that you can definitely do 20. You will be able to push out more if you dial the speed down. So you might be able to get a maximum of riding at a, a reserved rate of about 30 miles depending on a load of other factors as I went through in video one. Um, so keep that in mind if you're thinking, oh, do I, is it for me? If you're commuting five miles into work, 10 would even be pushing it, but 10 miles into work, there's gonna be no problems at all. It's gonna get you there and back. And so from that point of view, it's gonna be spot on. How have I found the handling? Now, the handling is an issue, see video one, in terms of heavy braking, that has not changed because it's the physical setup of this machine, essentially. Now, Kingsong have addressed almost, I would have said, all of the criticisms that I had in video one and a couple of extra that someone else must have mentioned as well. So I'm gonna read through those now because this is vitally important and I'll put the graphic up on the screen as an overlay and let, let's go through them. That's probably the best course of action here. So starting from the top left and we'll move round left and then use the middle. So harsh contact against inner knee. The padding was not thick enough, causing the knee to interact with harder elements of the wheel. 
Final projection will have increased the PU pad thickness from 4 millimeter to 12 millimeter. Okay, and then it also actually, just go across the wobbliness, users experienced issues where the wheel would wobble when braking. Yep. After testing, we eliminated the issue of being suspension related, totally knew that, but was rather padding related. Yep. Users could not grip the wheel when braking hard. We have since increased the PU pad thickness from 4 mil to 12 mil. So those two are tied in together. So that's really, really important. This thickness being increased spot on. And as they're focused around this, just this area of a gripe, because, you know, it's fallen off this pad. And so this is such a minor thing that honestly is, is so petty, but so infuriating. <laughs> you get a wheel that things feel like they're falling off. And then you get in that frame of mind, like, oh, bits are falling off this wheel. What it actually is, is a sticky little tiny little pad with some proper glue adhesion on there. It's fine. It's like, yeah. So they're focused in that area now. They are sorting that out. So definitely massive increase there from four mil to 12 mil. That will definitely make a difference. So at the moment, as I've explained in video one, really have to tilt your legs in to try and grip the top part of this whole body of this unit to stop it getting out of shape on hard braking. It is hard braking only, 650 kilometers on this wheel. It is under hard braking. But of course, it's important to remember that is actually the time when you do need it to behave itself. So if you're slow braking and being all lazy about things, you don't need it that much to respond as best as you could possibly want it to. If a car comes around the corner and you suddenly meet it head on, that's when you want to be able to brake real, real quick and sharp, and that's when it misbehaves. So what they've done here should help with that. By increasing that out, it's going to give you more purchase area and sooner because it's closer to your leg. Inner body shell. Some users experienced the case not being durable enough when crashing. We started using material with more flexibility, causing it to be less brittle. The final material is ABS plus PC. Now you'd have seen in the last video, the 250, that a piece snapped off when I pulled the charger out. It fell forward, hit the carpet, hard carpet, warehouse, office carpet. Um, but I can't really explain away <laughs> hitting carpet and falling apart. Um, so it's very difficult to dress it up, but it, um, it took a little chunk out. I was peed off because it's a beautiful machine and I don't like damaging machines. That's not what I'm in the game for. It's, uh, I love these electric unit cycles and I love the look of it. And when you chunk, take a chunk out of your wheel, it's like, ah, that's, I mean, a scratch, that'll buff out, that won't buff out. So they have updated that, so they've absolutely knocked the nail on the head, going to change the material, make it much better. The tyre we used on the prototype is a little bit wider than mass production, and the mainboard holder tubes had some imperfection. This resulted in the tyre being pushed to one side and scratched the body shell. We've adjusted the molding dimensions to eliminate these issues. So again, brilliant, that is epic. They've actually listened to the feedback. This is one good thing, so through all this, it's really good that they've listened and they've put in adjustments to try and get this wheel as perfect as they possibly can for the riders out there. And it's one vital thing that we're actually testing these things. Don't forget, I'm not paid by Kingsong to test this wheel. We bought this wheel and then we paid extra to actually ship it in. I have actually paid for this wheel. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm critical of it based on how you would be because I, I, I'm a rider at heart of these things, have been for years now. Um, and as I said in video one, I want them to be really good. So the excitement that you're feeling if you pre-ordered one and you want it in, that's exactly how I am. There's no difference. I'm not above that. I'm actually in it with you thinking, come on, be really, really good. And so when you pay for a wheel and a thing falls off, when it comes out the box, you're like, hmm, 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 like that. And at the same time, you've got to be level-headed and go, look, come on, it's just a pad, let's stick this back on. But at the same time, absolutely equally thinking, that is just not good enough. And then getting on it and riding it and hearing a rubber noise, is like, hmm, <laughs> face goes redder and redder and redder. Um, and so these little things, they're adjusting these things now. Okay, so this is gonna be make a massive difference. You get out of the box and a pad doesn't fall off, you haven't seen a pad fall off, it's all good. You get on it and ride it, it doesn't make a rubbing noise, it's all good. It's when you get a series of things cascading into problems, they become a major problem when you start adding them all up and they're addressing these, which is great. So well worth running through what they're doing here because it, it should transform your experience. So the handle, sometimes the trigger button gets stuck. Now I've not 
really experienced this. I found it with gloves, pressing the top part can be tricky. It is a small button, you've got to hit dead center on it to get it to pop up. But no real major issues, but someone obviously has. Sometimes the trigger button gets stuck. We've added a crystal silicon logo above the button to create a uniform force downwards. Now I think that's what they're talking about, the fact that when you press it, sometimes you can't get it to, to get it to, to actually go down properly. And I think by putting a button on top, what they're saying is you're gonna hit, first of all, it's a, it's, you can line it up now, rather than not quite seeing where you're hitting, and you're gonna be pressing that button naturally anyway. So you're gonna press the button and the handle will pop up. So they've added a sticker by the same on top of that. Steel slide, to increase the durability of our suspension, we have changed the sliders from aluminium to steel. The steel is treated to protect it against the elements. So not sure how that's exactly gonna work with protecting steel, not so sure on that one. But, you know, salty roads, it has to be very well protected, that steel, to stop it rusting. Aluminium is, is yeah, is not going to rust, is it? Mind you, can get aluminium rot or whatever it's called. No, it's very unlikely. You get it on Series 1 Land Rovers. Um, but there we go. Uh, outer shells. So user experienced the white body panels coming off when crashing. No, I have not experienced that, and I've dumped it twice. Um, we have increased the thickness of the clips so they don't come off easily. So brilliant. Again, I haven't experienced that, but that doesn't really matter, does it? Someone obviously has when they were out riding and testing it and they've responded and they've increased the clip size. So there's these little tabs usually, I would call them, that slot in. And of course, if they're too thin, you take an impact. It's flexible to, so it doesn't snap. But when that flexes, it pulls in, obviously it contracts and then it pops the clip out. So they just increase the size, so that won't happen. It'll still flex, so it won't snap, but the clips are longer, stop the panel falling off. Quite a simple solution, really. But for them, don't forget that means retooling, rechanging. It's a lot of expenses going into these changes for sure. And you might say, well, they have to, it's their product. Fair enough. Um, you know, but this this is uh, this isn't as I explained before, it's not quite the scooter market. Scooter market, they make a shed load of money, they sell huge amounts of units. These are very niche for these companies. So encourage them in their development of these wheels. Don't attack them, try and just be nice because the net result is actually they will put these changes in and we get a better wheel out of it. And as I said, thankfully, all the ones that are coming will have these changes rather than you getting this. Imagine if you'd have got this, you'd have been crying like me. And so they've updated the foot plates as well. So the foot plates are adjustable, allowing riders to lower the platform by two centimeters. This allows riders of different heights to have better control and increased comfort levels on the S18. Okay, so that's a bigger step of adjustment than it was before. I believe it was one centimeter before. So they've made that double. So they've doubled the amount of adjustment you've got there. Remember you do need with the suspension start with a high point, because if it's compressing, especially off road, it's gonna push down. So you do need to start higher to allow that form of travel. So there is kind of like a happy medium between all of that, of how low you can actually put the foot plates. The higher they are, the higher your center of gravity the better control with the lower center of gravity. And if you see on the far right there, it says we have changed the material for the padding so it doesn't rub off as easily. So that's just another little tweak they've done to the padding there. Suspension support frame, support frame color has changed from space gray to gold, which is good because theoretically you'll know which were pre-production units and which aren't. So that'll be a clear signal to say, hang on a minute, you've got the, the latest version. Should be going to assume that because it says they've changed it to gold. So all the ones that Speedy Feet gets in should have gold. The mudguard, not had an issue with the mudguard at all, but it says previous mudguard was secured by glue and one screw. The final projection is secured by a total of three. One on each shell and one in between with the addition of glue. Not had an issue there, um, but then I haven't come off it and hit it backwards. So tire change, so they've actually changed the tires we briefly touched on earlier. Pre-production, we used the H587. H666 was considered, however, CY of stock production of these tires. Final production, we use H5102. With all those changes put in, that really does address all the points. They've gone down that list and they've tried to cater for every single one of those things. So spot on, well done, King Song. It's really good to see responding to customer feedback. All those, with all those issues being addressed, that is absolutely ideal. So it looks as though this is gonna turn into an even better machine than it currently is. Those niggles hopefully be swept aside and all replaced out and swapped out. I have ridden in the rain in this, really heavy rain, and I've had zero issues whatsoever, which I shouldn't have any issues because it should be fine for downpours anyway. So no issues there, but 
as I say, it just, in terms of reliability, up to the 650 kilometers, it's just not shown any signs of giving out. So you're riding along, and I say, it's just solid. And so I, if you're looking for this, I can't say it enough, if you're looking for this commuter tool that is solid, uh, this performs that way. You just need to weigh up what range you actually need. Um, so if you want the comfort and you just want the strength of this machine and it just lean forward and it just gives you, gives you, gives you. I don't mean keep leaning forward, by the way, I'm, just to be clear, I don't mean keep leaning forward because if you keep leaning forward, you can cut out almost any machine. <laughs> it will be back, you'll try and tilt your back. What I'm talking about is the fact you can stand on it and reliably for 20 miles, 25 miles straight, it's just lovely. It's never going, oh, I can't cope. It's just lovely. Um, and taking the kick out with the suspension units adds that level of comfort. You've just got to weigh that up against what range you want out of this wheel. So I hope this gives you some insight. I'm obviously going to carry on now and then get up to a thousand kilometers and that will be the review finished. But that should give you a brilliant idea of exactly what you'd expect with this. As I said before, it's a, it's a beautiful thing really being able to do these multiple reviews for you guys because you get this insight you wouldn't usually get. The YouTube's awash with unboxings and initial impression reviews and a, and a short ride or maybe a 50 mile ride, but doing a thousand kilometers and reporting back over that period of time gives you a real solid foundation to what this wheel's actually going to offer. And you know that we will be absolutely blunt and open with all wheels. We never hold back. We're buying them, for goodness sake. As I said earlier, we're buying them. And it's costing us money, so it hurts as well when something doesn't work quite like you expect. And it is brilliant to see King Song respond and update. I mean, that's a lot of changes they're putting in to rectify these niggles and actual issues. So brilliant to see. Excellent. Just keep following this. Uh, like this video if you found it helpful. Please subscribe. Share the video. Really important you share the video. Get it out there. Um, go and go to electricpeople.org. Sign up there. You'll see behind the scenes and stuff from us. But there's other riders out there as well. Brand new riders that aren't on Facebook. So we've got these massive Facebook groups. Like we own the Ninebot one on Facebook. And that's got whatever it is, almost 4,000 members. But not all Ninebot riders are on Facebook. So go to electricpeople.org. And it's the same with this sort of stuff. Get on over there. If you can't stand Facebook, that's what electricpeople.org is for. Go to speedyfeet.co.uk. It'd be brilliant to have you as a customer. Support Speedy Feet. Uh, the channel, all the reviews we do, everything. It'd be great to have your customer. We do two-year warranty on our wheels. Now, as standard, six months on battery, 12 months on machine. That's a standard warranty on average across all the wheels and manufacturers. We do two years on everything. Um, if you throw it in a lake or off a cliff, don't cover that. But even so, look at the testimonials. You'll see that people actually get really, really good customer service. And that's what we spend a lot of time, a lot of effort on tend to say if you're cutting prices, if you want the cheapest and you're cutting prices, you definitely are cutting corners. For instance, if something goes wrong with one of these wheels, we have to fork out the difference um, in repair. So definitely find us cheapest price, probably not gonna get equal service. It's very unlikely um, or they're in it to make a loss. So yes, definitely encourage you to go to speedyfield.co.uk, have a look. Uh, we've got loads of wheels on there. If you're wondering which wheel is right for you, we've got, got a, a video which I'll link now above, and I'll also put it below, which is which wheel should I choose? One of the most commonest questions we get is, oh, I'm just getting into this, or I'm looking for a second wheel. What should I go for? We've produced a video that goes into all the nuances of choosing a wheel, such as this. This is a cracking wheel, but for someone who wants to do 50 miles in a single charge, it's a terrible wheel. <laughs> someone who wants to commute five, 10 miles to work, it's a brilliant wheel. So you can get these different opinions, but it does depend on usage case. Um, so we'll put that below as well. Definitely go and check that out and share that video for people that are unsure. Right, on that note, I will see you on the 1,000 kilometer final review on this wheel. I am trying to stack it on as quick as I can um, for you so you know where it's at. Such a new and exciting wheel and it's such a gorgeous looking wheel. So I will troop along, I'll see you on the 1,000 kilometer video review.